Okay, welcome back to members of 121 Community Church in Grapevine, Texas, and our ongoing study in Jurgen Moltmann in Plain English by Morrison. We're going to complete uh, Chapter 5 on the Trinity today with a, our 10th lesson, and it, it will give us a, the conclusion to the fourth book by Moltmann, Trinity and the Kingdom. Let's go to Block 1. Okay, summarizing the social idea of Trinity. It is a fellowship and a communion, three persons inclined toward one another in mutual indwelling, that's perichoresis, in mutual indwelling, centered around the surrender of the Son. Because the cross, it extends from all eternity, okay? God is agape, sacrificial love. Therefore, the surrender of the Son, that has been uh, that which uh, extends from all eternity. We have a social understanding of the Trinity where the passion of Christ is central, representing the God who goes out of himself in suffering for the world. That is critical for understanding Moltmann representing the God who goes out of himself in suffering for the world. Fellowship within the God self means participation in the Trinitarian history. God himself lifts us into participating in the triune history. The openness of the Trinity invites us into participation. When we see believe in scripture, replace believe with participation. Faithing, the verb faith, peace duo. We participate in the triune communion of agape, sacrificial love. And very critical to understand that, that uh, perichoresis. We understand the Trinity as mutual indwelling the mutual indwelling of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And that mutual indwelling lifts us up into participation in the triune history of the Godhead. Let's go to block two. The triune eschatological goal of unification. <clears throat> Unif uh, the goal, unification of God with all creation is the goal of the kingdom where God will be all in all, God will come to rest in his new creation. God will come to rest in his new creation. This fulfills the triune history of God. But it's God returning to God's self while the Holy Spirit lifts all of creation into that perfect reunification with the Father. Remember that. God's eschatological rest is a view that supports liberation theology. A social doctrine of the Trinity fits best here. We then redefine our understanding of personhood. What does it mean to reflect the image of God? What does it mean to define and understand personhood? We have an eschatological personhood. We are persons in fellowship. We are the image of God on its way to fulfillment. We are the eschatological image of God on its way to fulfillment. We are interrelated selves within God's kingdom. We interrelate with one another. We interrelate with uh, the Father as a personal Father in heaven. Let's close out with uh, Block 3, the Social Trinity, seven aspects of the Social Trinity. Number one, and we learned this from Bart, we learned it from Brunner, now with Moltmann, God is subject, never an object. He is the God of liberation, opened toward our historical and political situation. God is a God of community. God is a God of community. A united trinity as mutual indwelling, perichoresis. 
God is the triune mutual indwelling of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This is not modalism. It is uh, eternal perichoresis. And here's what eternal perichoresis is. It's a circulation of the divine life moving forward. God is best understood as a circle. It's been years now, but uh, in our life group, back when uh, Ross was preaching on 1 Peter, uh, the final lesson in 1 Peter was uh, when we gathered everything together and taught and learned a doctrine of the Trinity. And uh, when I presented that doctrine of the Trinity in life group, I presented it as a circle. And uh, Scott still has it saved on his phone. <laughs> I love that, man. Scott still has it saved. But uh, God goes out of himself. The Father goes out of himself through the Son, Jesus Christ, to create. Then the Father sends the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit indwells creation and continually lifts creation and lifts creation and lifts creation back in returning to the Father where the Father will then become all in all. So it's a circle. It is a circle. So it's best under to understand perichoresis is the large, all-encompassing um, circulation of divine life. I love the way that that's put here. In a circulation of divine life, always moving forward toward that time when God will be all in all. Return moment when creation will be liberated completely and lifted into perfect reunification with the Father. Let's do a quick recap and we'll wrap up here. In block one, we've got to understand that uh, note two, the cross stands from all eternity. We have a social understanding of the Trinity, but the passion of the Christ is central to the Trinity. God is agape, sacrificial love. So the passion of Christ is central to understanding the Trinity. God is the God who goes out of himself in suffering for the world. Christ reveals a God who suffers with us. Christ reveals a God who suffers with us. God goes out of himself in suffering for the world. Block 2 Note three, we are eschatological persons. We are in fellowship, persons in fellowship. We are the image of God on its way to fulfillment. And we are interrelated selves within the triune history of God. That is who we are. We have been lifted into fellowship with the triune history of the Godhead. We are on our way to fulfilling image of God. And we are interrelated selves. We uh, gather for fellowship in church in the body of Christ. We gather for learning together in the body of Christ. We gather for worship together in the church in the body of Christ. We are interrelated selves. And we also gather in small groups called life groups as a more personal, intimate level of being interrelated where we share each other's uh, successes and we suffer with each other's trials. Now block three, let's just read from note four on. The Trinity is the mutual indwelling of perichoresis, the mutual indwelling of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That is not modalism. Instead, it is eternal perichoresis in a circulation of divine life. The triune Godhead is a forward-moving circulation of divine life. Absolutely essential conclusion to Trinity and the Kingdom. Now we have gone through Theology of Hope, the first book of Moltmann's Crucified God that uh, was written to correct misinterpretations of Theology of Hope, and then Church and the Power of the Spirit, the Trilogy. And to that, we have added the fourth book, Trinity and the Kingdom. So 
these four books give us a great overview uh, of the theology of Jürgen Moltmann. Theology of Hope, Crucified God, Church and the Power of the Spirit, Trinity and the Kingdom. And we learn that uh, Moltmann is uh, a Trinitarian eschatological theologian. And that we are within this theology eschatological persons. We are the image of God on its way to fulfillment. We are to live in an eschatological interrelated way. And that means gathering together in fellowship, worship, and learning within the larger body of Christ and within smaller life groups. And now we understand Moltmann's theology as teaching a social doctrine of the Trinity. <clears throat> Perichoresis. Perichoresis. The circulation of the divine life always moving forward. For Moltmann, the triune history of God is a circular activity of divine life always moving toward the time when creation will be lifted back to perfect reunification with the Father in heaven and God will be declared all in all. But it's all about perichoresis for Moltmann, mutual indwelling of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But that is also a mutual indwelling that is open toward creation. And God, in his sacrificial love, gathers creation into the triune, circular history of the Godhead. And God indwells creation with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is behind the veil of finitude, lifting creation and lifting creation and lifting creation to perfect return to the Father when God will eventually become all in all, as the Apostle Paul tells us. So I hope you have been rewarded by these ten lessons of a, gaining an overview of the theology of Jürgen Moltmann. And for me, it's a great refresher to go back through these because uh, my entire adult life has been dedicated to the theology of Jürgen Moltmann. I certainly am very, very aware of the gift he has been given, that he has given to the world. Jürgen Moltmann has gifted the Christian community with tremendous teaching, spirit-inspired teaching, and I think we can be very thankful for uh, this 10-lesson overview. Uh, very brief, but very important. So that's going to wrap up our final lesson on Trinity and the Kingdom. Uh, that will conclude uh, our survey of Theology of Hope, Crucified God, Church and the Power of the Spirit, and Trinity of the Kingdom. Trinity and the Kingdom. And uh, we have concluded by getting a very good understanding of the Triune Godhead as a circulation of divine life always moving forward. Thank you for joining me in this survey of Moltmann's theology.